Today, I'm going to be reviewing um, The Rose Garden Husband by Margaret Whittemer. It was published in 1915, and as far as I can tell, it was the first of her full-length novels published. Um, it was recommended to me on um, a site I run called The Uncrushable Jersey Dress on Facebook and as a blog, and um, I popped it into my, my Kindle, and it sat there for a long time, kind of ignored, and then I was driving home the other day, and I was literally out of everything to read, and so I, I swiped it open, and um, my expectations were really low. I didn't, I didn't have um, any preconceived notions going into it, what it would be, and it is a very old book, and sometimes those read in quite dated ways, but I was surprised by what a gem this turned out to be. Um, the heroine is called um, Phyllis Braithwaite, and um, she's 25. She uh, describes herself as the library teacher. She runs um, the children's circulation desk in, um, I think, the New York, uh, one of the New York branches of the public library. And she feels very closed off from the life that she had before. She was raised a minister's daughter and had sort of a um, a wonderful, soft, and idyllic life, and she she felt very pretty and very young, and and like um, she had a lot before her. And then she became a librarian, and um, complains about um, sticky fingered children and um, the harsh electric light above her eyes, and how she's getting a line in her forehead from trying to read all of the. Um, the cards that come in and, and all of that. Um, the hero is named Alan Braithwaite, and he is 29, and he has been flat on his back for the past seven years. I will call him the undead groom. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's been in a car accident and also a bit of a psychosomatic daze, um, but he's unable to to walk and he feels a tremendous sense of apathy about his life um they uh they eventually come together this this review c contains all the spoilers by the way <laughs> um they eventually come together because she's been asked to sort of be his nurse slash wife um because his mother is dying and they think well you know he's gonna go in like five years anyway he's not living any sort of life so why don't we attach somebody who's really um, going to see to his his needs and and be in his corner? And so she agrees to do it again because she is just she's done with like living in a in a boarding house and eating stewed prunes I and mean, that sounds terrible and and having no time at all for herself. I think she has Sunday off, but that is it. She works you know six days a week and and it's been kind of a hard slog. So um, this book is sort of about um, how she gets to that decision and why she sort of reaches it. And then, and then the power that she wields once she has the, the position to transform Alan's life for him and what she does with that and what sort of kindness and um, youthful liveliness she brings to it. Um, I went and I, I read another um, poem by this author um, named uh, called Factories, and it was very interesting. Um, this was the poem that sort of first got her noticed, and the opening lines are, I have shut my little sister in from life and light for a rose, for a ribbon, for a wreath across my hair. And it sort of deals with um, factory girls and what kind of life they live as contrasted to this life of ease and luxury and, and delightful little um, commodities um, that the author lives. And, and I feel like that th those themes are sort of reflected in this book. The, the character of Phyllis just feels um, desperate to have room in her life to be a real human being instead of, um, as she terms, a library teacher. Um, one of the things that I really also liked in it was that the characters, um, sometimes in, in what I will term um, sweet romances, the characters can also be a bit saccharine. Um, and I, I sometimes feel mentally insulted by that because that's not how real people are. Um, he is not perfect, and she's not either. He is 
um, she describes him as a little spoiled and um, many times he's clinging desperately to her in, in a way that's not, you know, typically manly. And he's very inert and passive. And she, for her part, she's she's a little bit vain. She sees somebody, an old um, acquaintance on the street, and she thinks, oh, why does she get to live this great life? I had much better raw material than that girl. And um, she's excited when she has enough money to sort of look look her best. Uh, she's also a little envious, as I said, of that, that woman. And um, she she doesn't scruple to take the very last drop of warm water if she has a chance in her boarding house bath to take it. So I, I like that she's not a perfect person and he's not either. And they're, and they're two people who um, are going to kind of grow to, to know each other and to like each other. One of the things that I just thought was amazing in this book was um, the the phrasing um, that you'll stumble across, and it's very liberal. It, it it's it's all over. I ended up highlighting a lot of things on my Kindle, um, but one of the things uh, I'll just read off one of them. One sentence is um, amiable roundabout remarks. The old gentleman was shoving forward like pawns on a chessboard before the real game begins. I like that idea. I get such a sense of sort of this older man, the the, the man who ends up being sort of the um, the executor of the old Mrs. Harrington's will, and and sort of looking over her shoulder as she she treats Alan, being very anxious about having to broach some of these topics for the first time. And I like the idea of these opening salvos in a chess game. Um, one of the things that this book has. Uh, a trope that you find a lot in romance is the, I'm healed, it's magic. <laughs> and um, I'm not surprised to find that or anything, but I, I come from a family with um, a lot of siblings who are um, mentally and physically handicapped. Many of them have rich romantic lives. <laughs> and I, uh, this book was not heavy enough to sustain that discussion for any length of time. Uh, so I don't expect it. I don't, I don't, put that on the book as, a, as though that, that needs to happen. But the author is a really great author. And, and I was like, ah, oh, I, I kind of wish that some of that struggle had been sustained a little bit longer because I think that the author was really um, capable of it. So that was, that was sort of a bummer for me. Um, there are, I should warn you, a, a lot of ana um, anachronisms in this in this book. Um, as I said, she works in sort of an inner city uh, library and she discusses, you know, the Polish children very frankly, um, uses the term dirty little foreigners and um, every black person in, in the book, their skin tone is described in minute detail. Um, I should also say that every one of these people despite the dirty little foreigner's crack, um, is described with a great deal of affection. So um, uh, it's very interesting to see the author as I could see very clearly that she was a very um, forward-thinking and broad-minded woman, um, and yet sort of this is the way things were discussed. And that was interesting to me. Um, and there wasn't so much of it that I couldn't read the book either. Um, so I really enjoyed it. Um, because I run a Betty blog... Uh, Betty Neal's blog, um, we have something called um, Brighton. Whenever anybody's going to go and think about um, conjugal or non-conjugal relations, um, we call it going to Brighton. And so um, the Brighton rating on um, the Rose Garden husband would be out of 10, 10 being the highest. Um, I don't read 10s. Uh, it would be a 1, not a 0, because... Um, uh, even though uh, Alan's physically um, incapacitated state uh, doesn't lead her to think, uh, the heroine to think, huh, I wonder how things would work out, she does get to wear a rather fetching negligee, and um, he gets to see it. So my Brighton rating for this would be a 1. And um, overall, I just, I would... I, I couldn't recommend this book uh, more highly. I really enjoyed finding such a um, an interesting author of this time, 
And um, I would give this out of uh, 10. I would give this eight Bettys out of 10. And um, I look forward again to um, reading more works by Margaret Whitmer. Thank you.